Great. Welcome, everyone, to our uh, third um, in the series of timely OER tutorials. This one is on searching OER by discipline. And uh, this is Una Daly here from CCC OER, and we're so glad that you could join us. Um, and as part of this uh, tutorial today, we're going to uh, get into breakout rooms for about 15 minutes or so. Um, but prior to that, we want to ask you to um, rename yourself in the participants list uh, so that we know what your discipline number is. And that way, Liz Yada, who does a lot of this wonderful magic behind the scenes, can get everyone into a breakout room um, that is, that is covers their discipline. And we have some wonderful facilitators here with me today. Um, who I'll introduce in just a moment. So if you can click on the participants uh, tab in your toolbar, which should be at the bottom of your screen. Right now it says participants 53 on my screen, which means there's 53 of you um, here, which we're, we're just thrilled to have you. So if you click on that, a list will come up and you'll be able to find your name in the list. And when you hover over that, there's a more button to the right. And if you click on the more button, you'll see a rename and you can then rename yourself and put your discipline in front of your name. So uh, we chose this completely arbitrarily. Number one is humanities. Number two is social sciences. Number three is science and math. Number four is career technical education, including computer science and IT. And number five, if you have something very unique <laughs> that you feel doesn't fall into one of those categories. Thank you so much for uh, doing that. And Liz may be um, putting some of you number fives into other rooms just so that we don't get too large in that room. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, this is the third out of five sessions that we're um, doing on the, in the Timely o OER tutorial series. And now I wanna give an opportunity for you to meet our other facilitators today. Um, so first up is Susan Joaquin. Um, she's biology faculty at Butte College in California. She's also the OER distance ed and student learning outcome coordinator. Would you like to say hello, Suzanne? Hello, everybody. Great, and Suzanne's gonna be doing science and math today, thank goodness. <laughs> All right, next up is Rachel Artiaga, and we're glad to have her back this week. Um, she led the copyright and licensing last week. She's reference and instructional librarian at Butte College. Would you like to say hello, Rachel? Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Artiaga. And she's doing social sciences today. And um, another newcomer today is Trudy Radke. She's the Open Educational Resources Specialist at College of the Canyons and a recent um, master's graduate in history. And she's doing humanities for us today. Trudy, would you like to say hi? Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. Yeah, we're very pleased to have you, Trudy. And she's done a lot of work in this area. I think you've met me. And um, now I'd like to introduce Liz Yada, who is um, the Communities of Practice Manager at Open Education Global, our parent organization. And, does a lot of the magic behind Zoom. Liz, would you like to say hello? Hi, everybody. <laughs> Glad you could join us today. All right. Thanks, everyone. So today, the learning objectives for this are, we hope that at the end of this, you'll be able to identify at least one major OER repository that has materials in your discipline. Um, we also hope that you'll be able to utilize OER search engines to find materials um, so that you'll develop some strategies that you can use in the future. And we also want to, we also hope that you will understand how faculty peer reviews and accessibility information can help you with selecting the best OER materials uh, to use in the classroom. Any questions about that? All right. Don't see any at this point. So before we go into our breakout rooms, I did want to just go back and review a little bit of information that we covered at our first session back in mid-June um, about just a few of the um, big repositories out there. Uh, we obviously don't have time for all of them today, but I wanted to, to give you some information again about how you can use those repositories in the future to uh, read about um, what other faculty have had to say about these textbooks um, and these OER materials, and which can be very helpful for you in terms of making decisions. 
And the, the first um, repository I'm going to talk about is OpenStax. And I wonder, I hope a, a lot of you have heard of OpenStax. It provides textbooks for many of the gateway courses um, for the first two years of college, in addition to some other um, textbooks as well. Um, it does some AP work and it also does uh, a very comprehensive set of business courses beyond just the, the initial intro to business. Um, so it focuses on math, science, social sciences, humanities, business essentials, business essentials, and college success. So it really covers the gamut. So if you haven't been to OpenStax.org, you definitely should go there. Um, it's, it's a nonprofit run out of Rice University. And they uh, produce these textbooks themselves. They're openly licensed, so free for you to reuse um, and share with your students. And um, they actually do their peer review as part of the production process. So there aren't separate peer reviews, but you will see um, in the textbooks who did the peer reviews, and you'll see that they're subject matter experts and faculty, higher ed faculty. They are currently used in over 50% of colleges and universities in the US. And the exciting thing is that faculty who have adopted these textbooks um, have saved 9 million students over $830 million um, in the last eight years. And this has not been updated since spring. Um, and I know in spring, uh, there was quite a big adoption. So I'm guessing that number is quite a bit larger now uh, for OpenStax impact. Next up, I want to talk about the Open Textbook Library, which is um, a repository of textbooks, um, some which they've produced, but many which other folks have um, suggested belong in that library. And it has quite a rigorous um, set of criteria for the textbooks to be entered into the into this library. They, of course, it has to be openly licensed. It must be a complete textbook and it has must have already been adopted for use in colleges or universities. They now have 700 open textbooks covering a wide variety of disciplines. 60% have peer reviews by other higher ed faculty. And that number is growing all the time. And um, you can see the peer review rubric if you go up there. It's a 10 point scale consistent with many other repositories. So another wonderful resource for you. And the last um, repository I wanted to talk about is the Skills Commons, which I, am, I hope some of you are familiar with this one. It's focused on open educational resources for workforce development. It was built uh, through a big program at the federal government, uh, the TACT program, which was uh, for community colleges working with uh, workforce and industry uh, experts and boards uh, to develop retraining materials. And so it's a very large repository um, that um, has a lot of uh, wonderful resources. And for those of you who are joining me in room number four, we'll go take a look at that um, so that we can reuse some of those materials. Uh, finally, I just wanted to give you a search engine that um, is just about two years old, but uh, is, has a wonderful uh, front end interface. It's called Oasis. It was developed at uh, SUNY, SUNY State University of New York, Geneseo uh, State University uh, in their library there. And um, it has a really very easy to use interface for finding open textbooks, audiobooks, modules, um, and other multimedia materials. And so um, we highly recommend that one. It's, it's very easy to use and has um, quite a comprehensive set of materials in there, which they're continuing to build. So before we go into the breakout rooms, I just wanted to mention that there is a um, handout here. Um, the, the bit.ly is right here and maybe some, one of um, my co-hosts can pop that into the um, chat window for you. Um, this handout um, can be used during the search process if you if you like. Um, it also is there for you afterwards as, as quite a comprehensive list of various um, engines, search engines and repositories that you can use after the fact. Um, some wonderful open textbook uh, repositories, multimedia, open courseware, ancillaries, and then some discipline specific um, uh, repositories. So please do use that handout. Um, when, um, when you need some uh, further inspiration to find OER. So at this point, I think we're ready to go into our breakout rooms. Uh, Liz, how, how are we doing? Um, all right, let me just pause the recording.
Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> Liz, did you mute us all? Um, and anyway, this uh, we are back, and I just wanted to give our facilitators a moment to uh, share what went on um, in their room. So, Trudy, would you like to start? Sure, absolutely. So uh, we conducted a couple of searches. First, we went over to OER Commons, and we looked for medical terminology. And we found some courseware that we thought might work there, mostly in a zip file, PDF, and Word documents. Uh, and then we conducted a couple of advanced Google searches, including, um, I believe, ESL elementary and or grammar, ESL grammar, and uh, elementary Spanish. And we found a textbook for elementary Spanish on Galileo. So that was exciting. And then we had a bit of a discussion on the best way to put OER content in your course, either via a link or as a file, that kind of stuff. Wow. Excellent. All right. Um, and um, Rachel, how, how was your how was your facilitation session? I think I went way too fast and showed way too many things, but um, I showed them Nova. I showed them how to actually get the course from OpenStax so you can actually download um, a full the full course shell. Um, and then I showed Open Textbook Library, Oasis, and a really quick Google Advanced Search. Um, some of the topics were really specific, um, so we didn't find um, necessarily stuff um, for them right away. Great, great. Sounds like you showed them quite a bit. That's wonderful. Um, uh, next up, Suzanne. Yeah, uh, I, listening to the other two, I don't think I got through nearly as much. Wow. <laughs> um, we just went through some of the, the, the searches um, and talked about using limiters and how to do the Google advanced search. Um, so, yeah. Great, great. Thank you. Oh, and I'm number four. So, so I, I, um, I showed folks a few areas um, because we had a lot of computer people and business people. So, um, we first of all went to Skills Commons, which um, one of the comments was that it's pretty overwhelming. And I had to agree with that. We had a librarian in there um, who um, I suggested that she take a look and do some curation um, if she's gonna share that um, because it, it, it does have a lot of materials, but it's difficult to navigate. Um, we also went to Geneseo and found some information just by typing in computer science. There was a course at sailor.org, which is one of our resources on our, on our um, doc, our handout. Um, and then um, Val from Fox Valley suggested I, I do the Google, I, I show the Google advanced search for OER, which we did. Um, so it, 15 minutes is a whirlwind. Um, and um, I'm sure that people need more time to explore this on their own. And we will have more time in just a few minutes. We will take question, individual questions from folks. So thanks to all my, uh, and I'm sorry, Liz, you, you had a room too, didn't you? Uh, yes, yes I did. Um, so we did a couple of quick searches on Oasis and I also uh, mentioned our community email list where we have, because uh, we had somebody who was looking for, um, let's see, let me scroll up and find, fire science and emergency management. So that's a pretty tricky one. I recommended um, our community email list. Um, if you go to cccoer.org and under um, get involved, there's community email and you can find more information or search the archives um, for something that specific. It's pretty hard to uh, find it in the search engine. Yeah, yeah. Open Oregon might have some information in that area as well. They have some pretty comprehensive materials. Nice, thank you. So once again, here is that bit.ly. If you didn't catch that the first time, it's capital T-O-T -T and then lowercase search. Um, um, and I hope that you'll join us for our, our last two sessions. We've got a great one next week on designing courses with OER. And once again, it's the same format. It'll be a 30 minute tutorial, no breakout rooms for that one, but we're, we're gonna talk about course mapping and um, why that's important for designing with OER and that, how that will help you keep track of the materials that you're using if you're not using strictly a, an entire textbook. And then our final one, which is really exciting, is gonna be evaluating and selecting OER and looking at 
um, equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, and other um, issues uh, around course materials. And um, if you um, have some time, we'd, we'd, we'd appreciate your feedback on how the breakout rooms worked for you, some suggestions perhaps on um, better ways to do this. Uh, this was our first time, and um, I'd appreciate it if one of our co-hosts uh, can put the uh, bit.ly on the um, sharing your experience um, link in the chat window so folks can take that. And you can take it anytime if you don't feel like taking it right now. And finally, uh, we are here for um, Q&A and for the next 30 minutes. And so I think Liz is going to stop the recorder at this point and we're just going